Hi, welcome to the In Industry Astrology Full Moon Forecast for February of 2022. The moon has been waxing, the energy is increasing. How are you feeling? The moon is waxing, growing bigger and brighter, and on February 16th at 8.57 a.m. Pacific Time, the moon will oppose the sun and then begin to wane again. Hopeful, excited, maybe a little tense. The energy's been rising and this full moon is quite an auspicious one here in India. It's the Magha Purnima, a very holy day for taking sacred baths, like in the Ganga or in any kind of body of water. It said the water on all through this month, but culminating on this day, on the full moon, is um, very powerful for purifying the uh, karmas of the past. And I'm still here in India, surrounded here by water, the backwaters of Kerala. This um, particular full moon coming up, the Magha Purnima, is a particularly auspicious day for giving to charity as well, or um, saying mantra, prayer, even setting intentions for your spiritual progress or for good service, good deeds you want to do in the world. The full moon is in the area of the sky called Magha, Magha Nakshatra. That's why it's called Magha Purnima. Magha is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo. Magha is right at the heart of the lion, also symbolized by a throne. It's called Regulus in Latin, which is connected to royalty, king. So there's something um, regal, right, around the, this Magha star, something about honoring the past, honoring our ancestors in particular. It's said that the Pitris, the, the forefathers, our ancestors, reside in Magha and watch over us, guard us, protect us, and all of life on this planet. So this is an auspicious time to remember our ancestors as well, remember the supporting and protective power of the earth and how we're connected to one another. Also right now the sun is approaching Jupiter. Jupiter will be combust soon, but it is giving a direct aspect on this full moon and giving a sort of expansive, hopeful, hopeful inspiring energy for this time. Now, as the moon begins to wane, we're going to go back into this Kala Sarpa yoga that I've been talking about, which is um, more challenging. It's a little bit kind of like being in a pressure cooker, especially near the end of this month and the beginning of March, because everything is going to line up in two signs, Capricorn and Aquarius, sidereal, sidereal um, Vedic astrology. So all of the planets that are visible in the sky will be lined up in these two signs, Capricorn and Aquarius, which are both ruled by Saturn. So it is, I feel like we're still not quite to the end of some difficult astrology when it comes to, I mean, there seems to be something quite faded about what's happening, something that um, can be very tense as well. And so, on a, especially on a collective level, we're talking about collective karma, political, economic tensions and transformation in um, the next few weeks. One of the most interesting things about this time too as well is Venus and Mars. Venus has just come out of her retrograde cycle and she's extremely luminous right now in the morning sky, the morning star rising, right? So this is a very powerful regenerative time for um, relationships and for also establishing new boundaries and um, maybe starting new projects as well. But also Mars, this courageous warrior Mars, is right next to her right now. They're actually within one degree of one another. This alignment is called Graha Yuda. Yuda means war. So when two planets are less than a degree from one another, it's said that they're, they're rays, they're light which is how, you know, the influence of Jyotish is the light. These two lights start to intermingle and sometimes it's um, almost like they cancel each other out, out or fight. And especially with two different kinds of energies like Venus and Mars, right? The feminine and the masculine. The, um, kind of, it's like fire and water 
or maybe peace and war. <laughs> so there's something um, very much conflicting about this aspect, but Venus and Mars can also be very complementary, very um, inspiring in the way it creates a sort of charisma, uh, an, an attachment to do something, a zeal for life. So this Graha Yuda, the war, is going to continue until mid-March, March 11th, pretty much. It's going to be in alignment within one degree. Very unusual for these two planets. I couldn't find one quite as long. I think I have to go back more than 100 years, <laughs> probably, to find it. But um, in the past, when there are extended Yudas like this, it is a tense time. There's tension, usually. And um, historically, I saw, especially because Mars is a, a very um, explosive kind of energy, but th it is true that things can happen that are quite surprising, um, accidents or um, unusual situations that push things to the limit. So take it easy, especially when dealing with relationships. Venus and Mars, of course, are the archetype of relationships, um, the feminine and the masculine in particular. And so the polarities of relationships are being challenged I think in the next few weeks just in time for Valentine's Day as well so um, you know it's good to try to avoid conflict especially with the opposite sex and use this time as a challenge to really maybe deepen our understanding of what we really desire perhaps or how to fulfill desire or how to um, maybe stand up for what we believe in or stand up for um, what our needs are. But try to be patient if possible and definitely avoid unnecessary risks at this time or complicated situations. It's better to keep things simple until mid-March. There's a lot of change coming forward, especially in the month of April. We've got a whole new kind of era coming forward in April, a big um, kind of general shift in um, the astrology. So these next few months are a time for you to be really pulling within, I think, looking at what it is you really desire, what you need, and setting intentions for the summer to come. To understand more about this, you might want to check out my 2022 forecast, which I taught back in December. It is a two-hour class, and it includes horoscopes for all 12 Vedic signs. So um, if you're interested in learning more about how these you know, transits are going to be affecting you, especially coming up in April, um, do check that out. It's still available on my website for purchase. Okay, so let's just see what the tarot cards have to say about this full moon in Magga Nakshatra. So the first card that came through is the Prince of Cups. That inner looking. I think this card really is talking about that Venus-Mars conjunction too. You know, when these two different, like fire and water come together there is um, something about Mars especially drowning a bit in all of this. He is, in a sense, losing this war, I think, because Venus is very bright. So it's a time to maybe really ask yourself what you really want. And be careful, you know, not to be too hard on yourself as well, or on others. And then, the Emperor. So there is something, I think, actually very auspicious about this as well. Setting boundaries. Finding that true desire, that true um, empowerment of what it is you want in the world. Coming back to yourself. When Venus is morning star, that is really what she is doing. She is Empress of the Dawn, the Queen of the Morning Sky. 
And then the final card, this is the Temperance card, or in this deck it's called Art. And you can see it is an alchemical kind of image here. We have the blending of fire and water, Mars and Venus, perhaps, what we're seeing here. The, the blending of two completely incompatible elements, but to do it in the right way, to get the ingredients, to get the balance correct. It's really about, again, not going too far with things, being careful. There's so much potential to create gold. It's alchemy. Really transform and change a situation in your life. Yeah, so let's take a look at it. Connect with your true heart. Excavate and pull your truth out. It's time to own it. It's time to walk away from what's not working. It's time to hold your truth within you. Find the balance. Find the right quantity and create something. Be patient and careful. Slow it down and focus. There's a magical potential right now to create something amazing. You are completely capable. Okay. Thank you for coming to the full moon forecast here in India. I am offering um, one on one readings online. Vedic Astrology and Tarot readings. Um, check it out and get on my newsletter if you haven't already. It's free. I write a blog and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out my Instagram, my Facebook too. And I will see you soon coming up on the next new moon. It's a Shivaratri.